So a quick announcement that I wanted to make before the chapter review starts. I actually made merch for people who love the One Piece chapter reviews and who love One Piece in general and also want to support the Black Lives Matter movement. So you can check it out down in the description below. It will be a Teespring link and you guys can go support that. And from all the profits that I will be making off the merch, I will give away to the George Floyd GoFundMe Foundation. So if anyone wants to cop some clean merch and also spread awareness about the Black Lives Matter movement you can follow the link below hey yo what's poppin everybody welcome back to another one piece chapter review uh this week is going to be on chapter 983 titled thunder so um the cover page before we start off with the chapter actually has a wholesome reunion between charlotte chiffon his husband gang beige and his sister lola actually meeting up with uh, the dad uh who i don't think they've ever actually met before however he actually knows of them and i think he actually recognizes them in this scene so that's a pretty cool family reunion we're not gonna have to see what happens in the next week maybe Oda will draw the next um scene for the cover page of next week but let's just get right into the chapter this chapter is jam packed with action swear to god we start off straight away with uh Pero Sparrow actually looking at Onigashima so it looks like he actually traveled up the waterfall I don't see any of the other big mom pirates so I'm kind of assuming they went their own ways but it's I'm pretty sure they're gonna try to get up uh, and go into Onigashima either way so he looks at the Onigashima island and he says King Straw Hat Marco we're coming for you because King and Marco actually knocked them down and Straw Hat was why they actually came in the first place so he says quote the big mom pirates will be the only ones left standing so it can be seen that he actually does not agree with the alliance at all at the end of the day and I think he's trying to maybe just uh sit tell big mom of his uh, opinions and maybe try to get her back on her senses so we cut from there to the brothel on the mountain path where Usopp and Chopper was uh last chapter actually running away from big mom and it looks like they've actually gotten her off the tail because I think Prometheus actually called her and said hey uh, I've got Zeus I've got the person who stole Zeus so I think big mom was just deterred the other way and actually started following Nami Carrot and uh Shinobu's gang so they're pretty screwed and one thing I actually wanted to see was uh, in the panel, they actually say that Big Mom took a shot from the tank and it activated some kind of transformation. So I was wondering like what kind of transformation that would be and that would be really awesome to see. But I guess so for now, Usopp and Chopper are actually in the clear and they're gonna probably go regroup with a samurai. So we cut to within the brothel and we can see Big Mom chasing Prometheus, which are chasing the actual crew. And you can also see Zeus in this scene and he looks really terrified of what's gonna happen because he obviously ran away from Big Mom. And since he's a part of her soul and stuff, this is gonna be a big trouble. There's actually a really funny scene in this panel where Sanji just says, I won't abandon the prostitutes and Nami and Carrot are just super mad about it. But obviously Sanji being Sanji, he'll just take the girls over. But apparently he'll take the girls over Nami and Carrot, which is kind of stupid because that's what he's been simping for like the whole time. Whatever. So... We cut to Big Mom, and she's actually using her Soul Soul Devil Fruit to actually animate a bunch of objects. So here we have an old umbrella, an old sandal, and an old lantern. So she's kind of making like a little army of her own within the Brotha house, which is kind of crazy. So Nami, Carrot, and Shinobu are actually in for a little fight here. Uh, we actually skip from there to the Skull Dome. So it's the live stage in the middle of Onigashima, in the middle of the Fire Festival. And we have Momonosuke actually on the cross cross so from here you can see everyone in the fire festival just cheering on and queen makes an announcement that hey brother orochi is giving a special presentation we're gonna have an emergency show which is the execution of the last member of the kozuki clan who was supposed to have died 20 years ago so while I'm kind of conflicted with Orochi's emotions on the subject and all, it kind of makes sense that he has his armies all around him, so he really has nothing to worry about. So in the next couple of panels, we actually cut to the infiltration within the main stage and everything. We first see Zoro. So Zoro is actually fighting with a bunch of gifters at the keep. And from what this scarab uh, looking gifter says, there actually seems to be a lot more gifters than you would probably think. I thought it was going to be around like 200 
200 maybe 300 gifters because one in 10 actually gets to become a gifter um, that's the actual chance of the devil fruit working however he says there's almost 500 of us so wow there's gonna be a lot of enemies for the good guys to be fighting with and they're just all basically telling Zoro that he could kneel right now and he would still save his life save his ass and everything but of course Zoro being Zoro he's not gonna do that he'll just probably murk all of them so we cut from there to kid's side and killer's actually telling kid that breaking through the front line is actually an insane idea and this is exactly why so kid is just basically saying it's fine we'll manage we're all good and we actually see someone uh talk from afar saying that please wait a moment kaido sama is searching for someone so all the soldiers and stuff kind of look away for a second and kid's like dropping your guard means you drop dead so he just punches them with his metal hand and everyone's just getting murked so we cut to a boy's location luffy and we can see that he's right next to the location where ulti and page one actually fell down from the staircase and ulti's over here telling luffy like you've got some balls man how you do that to pay pay um luffy's just basically responding back with i didn't do jack bro like you were the one who slid down on the stairs with him like a sled so she's just going crazy at him for no reason and so the other guards who are standing right next to them actually tells Ulti that, Ulti-sama, you're mistaking him. He's actually one of the intruders. So Luffy gives the, you know, iconic speech. I'm Luffy, the man who's going to become the king of the pirates. And then Ulti's just like, come again? Everyone's basically laughing because they're like, whose castle does this guy think he's in? He's in freaking Kaido's castle. So she actually jumps up, arches her head back, and she says, there's only one man who's going to become Pirate King, and that's Kaido-sama. So she's arching back to give him a massive head concussion, and she just comes in with a massive headbutt attack called the Ulti Skull Cannon. That's, that's a pretty cool name. So Luffy and Ulti actually have a hockey battle between between them with their heads and you can just see hockey spewing out of the two they have like an eye battle like the death glare to each other and all the guards are actually just getting blown away by the sheer force and it actually creates a little explosion and all the guards are just seen like flying out of the scene and everyone's just like wow that insane headbutt you know ulti's got a head that can explode like a cannon and actually blasted a hole in the floor so she must have smashed his head to like pieces and everything so the next scene we actually see ulti and page one actually both transform so one thing that i want to note is that both page one and ulti transforms into dinosaurs and while we already know what page one transforms into he transforms into a dragon dragon fruit model spinosaurus ulti actually transforms into a dragon dragon fruit model pachycephalosaurus so that's actually the dinosaur that has that big head so we can understand why her head butt is super strong uh, it's one of those dinosaurs dinosaurs where the head is like protruding and i'll put a picture up there real quick so you guys can see it so page one's like hey sis and ulti's like i know i know you know he's a really formidable guy and everyone's just basically asking ulti why did you guys turn uh why did you both transform and ulti's like shut your damn mouth you know because this guy's the real deal i really acknowledge his skills and everything and the guards are all like no way you should have killed him by that headbutt and then she's like then who's hockey am i sensing god damn it like just shut your mouths bros like obviously he's not gonna die because he's luffy but basically luffy just says that hurts and that he shouldn't underestimate all these people because he is in an emperor's castle so he should actually up up his game so luffy proceeds to zip straight to ulti as she grabs both of her horns and kind of does this jump attack where he grabs her horns and kind of throws her back slams her on the ground page one's like don't do that stuff to my sis he actually comes in for the bite attack luffy proceeds to grab the ceiling kind of lift himself up he kind of zips down to underneath page one does the this gomu gomu elephant gun and i haven't seen that attack in such a long time so that was so goddamn satisfying jesus the elephant gun bros so h1 is basically out of commission at this point so ulti kind of grabs him and says you bastard how you do that to pepe she's about to arch in for another attack called the ulti meteor and luffy's just basically commenting on her strength like damn you're strong and mind you luffy's about to go into gear fourth here so he's about to go max level on these two people but then you can see both 
Ulti and Luffy actually looking to the side. Someone's coming in. Dude smacks Ulti with the Thunder Bagua. So mind you, that's actually the attack that literally almost killed Luffy when he first entered Wano Kuni. So we get to find out later that he's actually Yamato, the son of Kaido, which we were waiting on for so goddamn long. So that kind of begs the question of who was actually spying on Jinbei and Robin a couple chapters ago because honestly I actually thought that was Yamato so looking back now I'm pretty sure that might be like the government or something maybe Luchi possibly but anywho we now know that it cannot have been Yamato so everyone in the keep basically sees Yamato and all the guards just like hey we have orders from Kaido sama to actually capture him so everyone's trying to actually go for him now and Yamato kind of says straw hat Luffy that's you right kind of insinuating that he's actually been waiting for him so he actually says that while he's running with Luffy he grabs Luffy and starts running while the, uh, the other guards are kind of chasing him down and it's really super cool that Luffy actually has this like observational hockey I'm not sure what it is but he can actually sense if people are gonna do harm to him or if people are gonna be you know friendly and stuff so Luffy basically says yeah you didn't give off an impression that you would actually be someone of an enemy so he actually says back to Luffy that I've been waiting for you this whole time so we weren't actually expecting Yamato to be this friendly towards the straw hat people maybe you know he would have the same interest and everything but we didn't expect him to straight out come and save luffy yeah so yamato actually reveals himself to him and says he's the son of kaido and luffy's understandably confused about this situation because obviously he's never heard of yamato and he basically just expected to be defeating page one and ulti by himself but it's also really a good thing because we were all kind of expecting that luffy really has to be fighting more important characters and he does have you know way more important and more powerful characters up ahead like kaido so he has to save his power like he can't just go gear forth in the beginning and you expect him to still have full power to fight the goddamn emperor of the sea so yamato coming in is actually a big saving grace for the man himself and uh another thing that i wanted to mention is that yamato actually means great harmony in japanese so we all kind of expected him to be a good guy already so i'm expecting yamato to actually be that kind of like rebellious son and you know like just like how kaido says that that idiot son and everything so i'm pretty sure he's just gonna go against everything that kaido wants and that's just gonna add one more ally one more really really powerful ally as you can see just knocked out ulti straight away to the actual good guys team Team, and we might actually have a better chance of actually succeeding this arc without a lot of deaths or casualties and everything so that would be it for this chapter guys hope you guys enjoyed it as you can tell i certainly did this chapter was jam-packed with so much action and we got to see a little bit of luffy skills and everything wish we could have seen gear forth but it's a good thing that we're not seeing it now so that later on he can go full power against the guys that we actually want to see him fight so i hope you guys have a good rest of the day and i'll catch you guys next week hopefully if another chapter comes out as soon as another chapter comes out i'll be on that stuff and i'll catch you guys later peace out